Sean, we're live at City Hall tonight. The city of New Orleans. The skies are clear, but the lakefront in New Orleans is soaked. Strong winds combined with Hurricane Michael pushed Lake Pontchartrain over the seawall and across Lakeshore Drive Tuesday and Wednesday. I didn't know where all this water came from. I've never, I've been living here all my life. I'm, I'm 60 years old. I've never seen water in this area before. Even the littlest onlookers amazed by the big waves. Some can be like about as tall as me. Seeing Lake Pontchartrain like this has some residents concerned about the damage done 300 miles away. I'm a little worried about my friends that stayed. Joy Cohen knows the panhandle well, calling it home for months after Hurricane Katrina. The schools welcomed us, the place welcomed us, they gave us clothes and supplies, and I got to know and be friends with a lot of the people down there. She said she's preparing now to offer friends from Florida refuge here. Yeah, because I know there will be people without places to live, and there won't, probably won't be power for a long time. Reporting in New Orleans, Jennifer Crockett, WDSU News. And you'll fill this one out over by the bar. All right, good luck, man. I'm excited, nervous. Uh, I've never done something dancing or anything in front of a crowd of people, so this is the first. I have been practicing so much. I have been at my job since Friday, scaring customers with sporadic movements of dance. We're looking for people that can entertain a crowd. The dance is important, but at the end of the day, if you can count to eight, I can teach you how to do our dances. Out of the roughly 100 people between today and yesterday, we'll call back between 40 and 45. Right. Stompers, you know, they're teaching us the moves, and uh, they're very patient with us. So that you can start working on your freestyle. We're going to actually teach them the dance, uh, teach them how it's going to work. Then they're going to refine it, and from that point, when their turn is called. Let's welcome to the stage number 367, Mr. Blaine Sturplantis. They're going to have to get up there by themselves after they just learned this and perform it in front of anywhere between three and 500 people. I, I've seen some of these people before. There are people out here today that have auditioned three, four, might be their fifth time auditioning. This is my fourth time trying. I've gotten to the point where I told them, like, y'all can't get rid of me. I'm like, I'm going to be here, like, coming in a walker, like, at 70 years old. It is amazing, because it's basically a no-judgment zone. Like, you get up there, you dance. Even if you mess up, they're still cheering you on. It's just about getting out there, showing what you got, putting personality first, and that's what's going to get you ahead. Yes, we are. What you need? Have y'all fish out in about two minutes. Thank you, babe. Martina Mackeon is making up plates for a purpose. No, these two plates are for them. That purpose, her niece, 16-year-old Celicia Neighbor. She always was calling. <laughs> I'm gonna miss her calling. See what you cook today? I'm coming over there. She will definitely be missed. Definitely. Celicia, or Cece, as her family calls her, was shot at a park in Holly Grove September 9th. It was all kind of plans, all kind of things that we had going on, and it kind of puts your family at a halt when something like this happens. A halt that felt like a lifetime. Cece was left brain dead, but her family kept her alive for days so she could save lives before she lost hers. I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> donation, <laughs> but it was, it was to save a couple people, maybe a handful of people, like people need kidneys, you know, things that she had that was really healthy. A difficult decision, but a good deed. One they pray will come full circle. A funeral, it's pretty expensive. And 
no one, I guess no one wouldn't have never thought of having to bury their child at 16. Cece was taken off life support this week. I just need a bread right now, babe. And right now the family is desperately fighting to raise enough money for a funeral and burial. And it's only $10, so y'all come by and get y'all a plate to honor my niece. If a person never had to be in our shoes, I would definitely believe that we would do the same thing for them. You know, donate whatever we can. They screamed, they were, they were pretty scared. Longtime Galliano resident Ryan Boudreaux describes the terror seconds into a tornado. Once I saw the trees flowing in the direction that they were, that this, you know, this wasn't just a, a normal gust of wind, and this was, you know, this was in fact a, a tornado coming through. A nearby neighbor says they were caught off guard. I was making a chicken gumbo and it had a lot of rain coming. Oh, the next thing I heard was like an explosion. Whoa, look at that. Kelly Moore was headed north on Highway 3235 in Lafouche Parish. She caught the tornado on camera. Right up the street at the Sonic Drive-In, surveillance video shows the white canopy spin around as that powerful storm rips through the drive through The owner says a frantic employee called him around 10 o'clock Sunday morning. Roofs blown off of buildings, cars have been moved, um, you know, so I kind of had to calm her down to really find out what happened at first. And uh, so then we headed this way and I mean, just unbelievable. He says the restaurant serving breakfast at the time. The uh, customer grabbed one of the car hops and held on to her as it came through. So, yeah, very blessed that no one was injured. Late Sunday morning, tree cutters and power crews were already at work. Residents, too. They were cleaning up as Red Cross officials handed out food and tarps. They say homes were destroyed. Three to five with major two destroyed, and that's just our initial tally. We're also making sure that people have a safe place to stay tonight. They might have lost a few feathers on the way, but I think they're all right. <laughs> Especially on the water. I respect Mother Nature. Always did. Sculpting is something I can really get into fully, both physically and mentally. When I first started, I would find that an entire hour had passed. It's a very meditative process. I've always loved skull, skull stuff, skeletons. And I thought, well, I don't know, I'll come and make a skull just to amuse myself, and I did. And I had a couple of friends say, hey, make me one. And then next thing I know, we're up to 80, 90 something skulls so far that I've made. I don't know, I gotta get rid of them somehow. And then it turned into this whole thing. The first one that I hid was at the New Orleans Public Library, and that one was found by somebody within 30 minutes. I'm like, all right, well, I can maybe use this as a way to highlight places that I like. Uh, I hid one in City Park, basically at midnight, just to see. It was like a test. If I don't even tell people where this is, I just tell them, City Park, Eagle Statue. Can you find that? By 2 a.m., somebody had sent me a message, hey, man, we got it. I'm like, this is nuts. What are you people doing out here? I have been, uh, frankly, astounded at how quickly these things disappear. There have been times where I've sat around waiting for a minute to see if somebody's going to show up, and within 15 minutes, they have it. I try and keep them about this big, but uh, as you can see, some of them have a bottom jaw, some don't. Multiple people commented, oh, you should get an Etsy. To all those people I've responded, I don't have any intention of selling them. I'm not doing it to promote a service or a product. Uh, I'm just doing it because it's fun. I like watching people get excited about it. So I get a lot more enjoyment out of uh, making these and giving them away. So I have to finish coating it with gloss, and uh, then we can go hit the road and hide this somewhere. Good job, little buddy. Way to come into existence. Probably because of how I was raised, but I feel if you have something that you can share with somebody else, you should share. 
I don't have a reason to keep this all to myself. I have an opportunity to make something and share it with people for no reason other than I can. While we've been here 125 years, it keeps evolving. That is the one constant at Commander's Palace is change. I feel like Commander's is my home away from home. Christmas should be ready to roll. It's just a wonderful place to come and enjoy yourself whenever you can. How is Commander's different than any other restaurant in New Orleans? What do you think? I think we don't take ourselves too seriously, mm -hmm. and we want everybody to have fun. You know, not no stuffiness right. or, or uncomfortableness, just a, a wonderful dining experience to yeah. come here and make delicious dining memories. Yeah. I'm Lally Brennan with Commander's Palace Restaurant. I'm T. Adelaide Martin with Commander's Palace. Well, I would say T and I are connected by, like, the umbilical cord. <laughs> I didn't say that right, umbilical cord. Lally and I have a saying that we may hold the keys to Commander's Palace, but it belongs to New Orleans. We want to be that restaurant that New Orleanians are proud of. We want to be that place you come when it's something special or it's just a Tuesday and you need to be yeah. pampered or you just made a business deal or you, you know, all the special things in life from the good to the bad. But it is about New Orleans and we all believe life is meant to be lived. It was conceived and built by a man whose name was Emil Commander. That's why it's called Commander's Palace. Right. And um, he's operated it as a restaurant ever since. And we bought Commander's Palace in 1969. I don't know yeah. if you know this, but actually on my ninth birthday. I do know that. We came to dinner here. What a present, said, huh? You're a lucky girl. It's been a good present. <laughs> it's been a great present. <laughs> well, Commander's Palace, we thought, was um, built in 1880. We found out a few years ago that it's really 1893 is the actual date. Our parents and everybody else told us that it started in 1880, so we went with that. And you will see it on a plaque out front and on yes. the floor when you come in and everywhere else, but they were wrong. So we are really 125 years old this year. This year. Don't we look good for 125? I think we look great. But and we like to say, what girl wouldn't be 13 years younger anytime you could be? Happy to know, Happy to know I'm 13 was... years younger. Well, one of the things that we just love and have enjoyed over all the years is the amount of culinary talent that has come in and out of the doors here at Commander's Palace. With Paul Prudhomme, who your mother discovered, Ella Brennan, discovered years ago. Paul led to um, Emeril Lagasse, which then to Jamie Shannon, and now our dear, dear, talented Tori McPhail. Do you, how else do you look at man? You okay? A ton of talent here right now. Yeah. You know, on a basketball team, we said they have a good bench. We have one hell of a bench. And we are blessed to have the kind of talent that we have. Yeah. And we're going to celebrate our 125th this year, and, and we want to keep pushing the envelope. Commanders is always trying to be on that leading edge. You know, I know Commanders has been here for 125 years, but there's nothing old about no. what we're striving to do. Exactly. Push, evolve, what's next? Next new system, next new dish, next new person who's going to infuse us with energy and ideas. That's what we're about. We are not going to stand still. It's not what we're about. Our container may be old, but our spirit is young. Ha, 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 ha.